one, amen. Good morning. Friday, Friday. Um, I had a thought this morning, um, just rolling around a lot of different thoughts in my head because I was watching the atheist experience. And it's, it's amazing, the uh, mind, that, the, the model of thinking that they use is so, it, it's so amazing that, um, I don't know, I'm going to be getting into that. I might actually give them a call sometime and see if I can um, learn how to get out of all the little traps that they get you into. I'm not sure if it's worth my time. Sometimes it's right to answer a fool, sometimes it's not right to answer a fool. But I still think, because it's getting so popular, it is an issue, and as a Christian, I believe it's right for us to deal with the issues at hand at times. You know, we need to pick, pick our battles wisely. We don't want to get carried away with things just because it's an issue. We want to still stay on target with God and preach the gospel, but at the same time, let's see if we can't uh, forsake not the gathering and also forsake not the um, fixing the issues and, and solving their problems and the mindsets that are very devastating and wrong and obviously lead to destruction, okay? So um, today I was talking about thinking about sin and how in the Bible people define sin in two different ways. Some people define this sin as missing the mark and some people define sin as transgression of the law. And I believe both of them are right because it kind of gives you a different aspect of what sin really is. So, and I was kind of trying to filter my mind around it so we can get an idea of what sin is. Sometimes sin is not doing what you're supposed to be doing. That's what it, that's what it says in the beginning. It's like and sin will be knocking at your door because you aren't doing what you're supposed to be doing. Meaning there is action that is expected of you as a believer in God. There is things you have to do and there are things that you have to not do. You can't do because there's parameters. So I kind of think of it as the sheep pen. As he talks about us being a sheep, here's another way of looking at us as a sheep, is that we're inside the pen and we can't go outside because that's transgression of the law. But while we're in there, we have to graze and we have to um, be nice and we have to do work and whatever. So there's parameters for us as far as don't go outside of these parameters. And while you're inside the parameters, do these things. When you fail to do these things, you are missing the mark. And when you are outside of the parameters, you are transgressing the law. So there's two different aspects of the doctrines of sin. I guess it's called hermodiology. I haven't really studied much about it. And I didn't learn that from that, but that's something that I thought was really, really interesting because of like the simple, you know, probably the two most basic um, doctrines about sin that you, we, most Christians know about. I'm sure there's tons of more, but those are the two that people, how do you describe biblical sin? Missing the mark. Oh, that's all it really means and the transgression of the law. So I think both of those have to be brought into focus so people don't end up arguing, well, that's not bad because this is missing the mark. No, that's transgression of the law. There's two different ways of looking at it. And depending on what subject is on the moment and uh, whatever is the subject at, at, at play and whatever the apostle was deal dealing with, was it dealing with missing the mark? Was it dealing with transgression of the law? Probably, probably addressing things according to what it needs to be addressing as and calling it what it is. It says, as sheep in the pen, you should be doing these things and you're not. And you shouldn't be doing these things and you are. You know, so it's different ways of looking at the doctrines of sin, hermodiology, uh, 101. <laughs> and uh, ultimately, another piece of the puzzle for us to knock this thing out and try to learn the arguments about the atheist mind. Um, I know that seems like it's kind of unrelated to the atheist mind, but um, really... There's a lot of different things that people have gone into. See, one of the things I've heard, I'm not sure if all of the folks in the atheist world, uh, atheist experience, um, were all Christians before, really believed themselves to be Christian, and then left it, thinking, well, this really isn't nothing, you know, this really isn't really anything at all, and had interesting different uh, scenarios as to why they had to leave. And a lot of them were Baptists, I think, or Episcopalians, or whatever stuff that I think is oftentimes not exactly um, on target anyway because if you whatever denomination you were in if it wasn't in the time of revival then your denomination was in a place that could not it could be in a place where it wasn't pre properly presenting the issue the issue was sin um, you, you are a sinner you have sinned so you are a criminal and you have crimes you have two different issues what are my crimes? You missed the mark and you've transgressed the law. <laughs> it's different things. We all have sinned. We've all missed the mark and transgressed the law. And we have all fallen short of the glory of God. Now, the problem I have with these folks is that they, none of these people can testify to saying, yes, I know I was born again of the Spirit. No, they were born again according to the mindset of the uh, churches. 
And in my mind, a lot of that stuff looks like atheism anyway, compared to what the Lord showed me, is a lot of what Christianity does. It's almost like a vain belief. It's a very, very belief that just doesn't seem to really cut the mustard. And it's hard for me to understand that different versions of Christianity where there is no spiritual revelation, there's no religious experience or whatever you want to call it, to really define this is really cutting past the natural and into the supernatural, you know, because you could be a natural man and be in religion. That's why I'm that's why I believe there's so many different views among Christian circles, is because it's in the natural and not the supernatural. And whenever they do cross over to this to the supernatural, it's not necessarily the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Spirit does different things. He works in different ways, and so it's it can separate the church because they, they they found God in a different way. That must not be really God or something. So there's a lot of different ways to break it down. I can understand that, but I really kind of want to keep my mind on a lot of different targets. You know, I remember like Kent Hoban talking about how he likes to have a variety of things in his life, and he likes to read a book on Nazism once a, once a month in order to keep his blood on boil because sometimes knowing what the enemy is doing it keeps you very angry and it keeps you from being complacent and lazy and you, you surround yourself with all Christians you're going to get comfortable and think the whole world is just fine but when you get around the atheist mind you get around different minds that are drastically different and seeing how much they hate what we're doing and see how much they hate God and how much they're destroying us and what, destroying what we're supposed to be and how we're falling for so many traps and, and messing up a lot Boy, it sure makes you just want to step up and say, all right, let's get to battle. Let's, we got to get to battle. we got to find out where we can get to, to take action here. Of course, it's going to ultimately be on our knees so we can get past the natural and into the supernatural where God can start to make things happen. And He can open up doors and shut doors that um, will be beyond the capabilities of man dealing with. And He's the one who's going to be changing hearts and freaking hearts if they want to know the truth. And He'll help us, help us to know when to answer the fool and when not to answer the fool. Amen. So just a few things on my mind right now. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be part of the uh, sermon or not, but I, I mean the developing thought, but I've, I've always wanted to nail that down. So a little bit of the atheist mind, a little bit of the issues of how we can keep our blood on boil and keep the hot keep the hot vision. We need a variety. I think a lot of us do need a variety. I think the body of Christ needs to be willing to take in um, other things than you, than you think sometimes, if you can, in order to keep your keep you on function, make you, making sure you stay in battle mode, you know. Um, it's hard for me to relax a lot of time because in order to be in battle mode, you have to already be at a certain state. And so it's hard for me to relax in certain situations because they're so relaxed. I'm like, dude, I can't relax around you guys. You're way too relaxed. You're not in. A, you're so far from the uh, battle mode that I can't be around it. So anyways, praise God. That's all I got for now. I just wanted to kind of chit chat about that. If you have any comments about that, about the sin doctrine, about the atheist experience, some of the mindset that they have had. I've heard it, you know, I, I hear their mindsets and they have little interesting ways of thinking that make, that sound logical, they sound like they make a lot of sense, and they sound like ways I can't always get out of those little ditches that they get you into, it's hard to change, it's hard to go into other mindsets, you know, you want to follow their thoughts, but they follow so dark, they follow so far off the track into dark caves, they're like, whoa, I don't want to get lost in these caves, man, so you're like, you get frustrated, because it comes out of your comfort zone. And then you start to attribute your, your your anger, attribute your anger to these people, and it starts to become a fight. You start to get angry with each other because it's it's hard to change your mind. It's hard to get to deal with these things. So if you have any thoughts about how to deal with how to think how to, how they, to get out of the thoughts patterns that they get you into the little uh, little caves that their minds draw, go into, do you know how to get out of those things? If you've got any thoughts about those, throw them on here. If you have any thoughts about the doctrine of homodiology, which is the doctrine of sin then throw them on here as well. Hope that helps somebody about your views. It's really nice to have your views put together so when you're in the streets and doing battle and evangelizing one-on-one -on -one or whatever, I'm thinking about doing that too. I've seen different street ministries do that where they have an open mic for the um, question people. People asking questions, they can ask a question openly and we can answer them openly. I think that's kind of a cool way to do it too. So we might be trying to do that. We have two different microphones now, which is a huge blessing, praise God, amen.